Hi right, team, welcome back to the channel, man. As always, I am stoked and I'm pumped up to see you, baby. Come on now, how y'all doing? Uh, so today we're going to be talking about training, and of course, uh, this is one of probably the more popular uh, uh, subject areas on a board. And why? Because NCOs train. This is something that we do, right? So I think this is something that we need to, to understand how the Army expects and wants us to get after training. And, and being able to communicate this, uh, whether or not you can regurgitate every uh, word or sentence or list from a regulation, being able to just talk about training and why it's important uh, is huge. And at the end, on the back end of this, I'm going to tell you, we're going to talk about the uh, eight-step training model. Uh, <laughs> no, we're not. We're going to talk about the 11 principles of training uh, in this one. And this is going to be one of those lists. Uh, A-step training model is another. Uh, TOPs is another. Uh, that if you get this, right, uh, the definition of Army leadership the, and knowing that the leadership requirements model, if you get a few of these things in your kit bag, if you get them really ingrained in your head, you can use these as an answer for nearly any question that comes your way. Right again. That's uh, the principles of training. Your eight-step training model, uh, your TOPs, definition of leadership, and leadership requirements model. Get these things down. So we're going to jump into this. Uh, what are the three training domains that the Army uses? Right. So the three training domains are institutional, operational, and self-development. You should know basically what each one is, and they're kind of uh, self-explanatory. So institutional training domain are, are all of our schools, right? Operational training domain is your unit. It's what you're learning on the job. And self-development uh, is obviously what we're doing, like basically right now, right? Is what you're doing right now. Um, I, I don't know that I would say that one is absolutely more important than the other, Um you could get asked a true question like that, but that would just be however you'd want to answer it. Uh, so the next question is, how do commanders exercise the responsibility to train units and develop leaders? And so the question again is, how do commanders exercise that responsibility to train? And you could probably imagine that commanders do that through things like the NCO support channel, through policies and procedures, through informal chains. Of course, it's assisted by other officers or commission officers and development through progressive, challenging, and realistic training, right? So when you get this kind of question, like how do commanders exercise, what you want to think of is, you know, how do commanders do their job anyways, right? So a commander has subordinate officers and leaders, right? So you have platoon leaders, you have XO, you have a first sergeant, and you have platoon sergeants. Right? And then you have all of the other informal uh, and formal policies and regulations and SOPs that they may put out policy letters that may be implemented. And of course, you develop a training plan uh, to get after all of these things, all based on uh, their MET assessment. What training uh, event provides the experiences necessary for building ready units? Again, what training event provides the experiences necessary for building ready units? When we talk, start talking about a singular training event that's going to build uh, the experience is necessary to deploy. We're talking about CTC rotations, right? So uh, it's going to be your major training events, your, your primary or priority training events, your combat training center or CTC exercises, as well as your operational deployments, right? Why does the Army train? So this is a, one question that you could probably answer uh, in any number of ways. Uh, the book answer is the Army trains to provide ready forces to combatant commanders worldwide, right? So the Army trains in order to protect our nation, to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Like, if you told me that, then I, I'd probably give you a go. How do commanders apply the operations process to training, right? How do we apply the operations process to training? This is another one you should probably know a little bit about. So you use the steps, plan, prepare, execute, and assess. And listen, everything begins and ends with assessment. If you ever get asked a question like, how does this process begin? Or what, what 
ends this process. The answer is always assessment. I don't care what the subject is. It's always assessment. And so what are the 11 principles of training? Uh, we're going to list these out uh, and then just kind of talk about each one a little bit. So again, this is one uh, of a few, uh, you know, total, I, I hate to use the phrase total soldier concept, but it's in that phrase, right? It's in that realm that we need to get down inside of us. Now, you're probably not going to be asked, what are the 11 principles of training? You could be asked, there are 11 principles of training. Name me as many as you can. Or they could ask you to uh, ask you 11 principles of training. So they are, you know, commanders are responsible. NCOs actually train. You train a standard, train as you fight, train while operating, train main, uh, train the fundamentals first, uh, train to develop adaptability, train to sustain, train to maintain, train to understand the operational environment, and conduct multi-echelon and concurrent training. So what we're talking about here, right, and most of, a lot of these you can get if you just, you know, you don't have to, even if you, if you read them in a reg, a lot of them are really long answers, right? I mean, you can see, you know, how do you get a list like that down? And the answer is you really can't, uh, especially if you're working on a short notice. But you can say things like commanders are responsible, NCOs actually conduct the training, you trained as you fight, you train to maintain, you train to sustain, you, you train multi-echelon, you know, and you start answering some of these right off the bat, and you're like, man, I know more of this than I gave myself credit for. So commanders are responsible, right? And that's another one. Who's responsible for anything? The commander is. Who's responsible for the self-development training domain? Now, you are in charge of, you know, you execute your self-development training domain, but the answer of who's responsible for anything within an organization is the commander. And you are the one out executing that self-development training domain by watching this video. So commanders and other leaders are responsible. But NCOs are the ones who are charged with executing, right? You hear, uh, I say this kind of stuff all the time. I don't, I don't write policy. I just execute. Th that, that's what it comes down to. I, I'm an executor of policy, Right, and so we trained a standard. So you need to know what your standards are. Your standard is not what Top said. It's not what your platoon leader said. It's not what anybody said. These standards are the army standard. So we get these standards from our TE and O's, our training evaluation and outline. So you should know about your met, about your mission, essential tasks, right? And when you formulate these together for your unit, you have a metal mission essential task list. And whether or not you're looking through ATN or DTMS to pull these TE and O's and to understand the, the, the supporting uh, individual tasks and supporting collective tasks and drills, like you need to know these, especially if you're an NCO going to become a staff sergeant. You should be able to talk through this process, right? And so these are the standards that we train to, right? And so we train uh, as, uh, as you will fight. Now, that means we need tough and realistic training. And so we train as we're operating. We train to sustain. We train to maintain. And so what does this mean? This ultimately means that regardless of the environment that we're in, regardless of, of the variables or the conditions that we find ourselves in, we can continue to do our J-O-B, whatever that is for, for your specific MOS and for your unit, right? Does that make sense? Multi-echelon uh, training is anything uh, and or concurrent training is anything that you're doing that is more than one echelon. So what is an echelon? An echelon could be a squad. It could just be a team. It could be individual. It could be a platoon or company. And, of course, it could be working with all of it. Like if you go to uh, CTC rotation, or you go down to NTC or JRTC, and you're working with multiple other uh, organizations and particularly even agencies or just uh, components, right, having some reserve components there. You're working with all of these folks to get your job done. But it all begins 
with taking a team and then working that team in with a squad and then working that squad in with a platoon and then working that platoon in with a company. If all you did was company training, right, you would never do a company live fire, right, without having done a platoon live fire. But you would never do a platoon live fire without doing a squad live fire. And you wouldn't do a squad live fire without a team live fire. If you do, like you're... You're, in my opinion, accepting risks that you shouldn't be accepting. Uh, so I think that about does it. Uh, you know, and another one to, to talk about is trying to, to develop adaptability. And, and again, you know, we go out to different locations. We train at night, right? We train during the day. We train in the desert. We train in the forest. We train in the mountains. We train on the plains. And all this does is it enables us as individuals and as leaders and as units, to be able to adapt to different situations. We train in urban environments. We train, uh, we try to uh, train for peer-to-peer -peer environments, right? Because we don't know what the threat of tomorrow is exactly going to be. We just know it may not be what it is today or was yesterday. But it could be, so we need to have all of these things because it's all very asymmetrical. So I hope I hope some of these questions kind of kind of dug into you a little bit and, and help maybe provoke some thinking on your end as far as how to prepare for a competition and what training units means in uh, the regulation and for the army, which ultimately means for us. If you did, make sure you leave some comments down below. And as always, man, I look forward to, to growing the conversation and the community. Until then, man, y'all, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.